Player. B but that's not how surprise rounds work. DM. Well, surprise! Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Scatterway and welcome to another D&D Green Text video. And yeah, without any further ado, I hope you enjoy it. Upper class PC. What are your thoughts on someone choosing to play a noble character instead of a lower class character? Is it a warning sign? DM. I'm very confused. Me. Why? Well, we have a dirty druid hermit, a grizzled swashbuckler, a barred conman, and a bloodthirsty tribal barbarian. And that's confusing you? No, what's confusing me is the fact that you're playing a rich and powerful sorcerer with ties to the upper class. Oh, I'm the party's sugar daddy. I never thought of it, but if, we, if, if I look at things this way, I think it kinda makes me the party that I play in. It makes me the sugar daddy right now. <laughs> In one of the campaigns I'm in, one of the players belongs to one of several noble families with strong ties to the empress of the setting, and this family's ties are integral to the plot as they have made certain negotiations a lot less lethal. So a noble PC can be done well. Character dies during introduction. Quickest player death. D&D story time. I was running the first session of a new campaign. Everyone starting at level 1. We had an elf druid, a half elf ranger, dragonborn sorcerer, and a tiefling rogue, as the party was going through introductions. 5 foot 2, 90 pounds, tiefling. I don't like to be touched. 6 foot 3, 250 pounds, dragonborn. I pat her on the head. Tiefling. I bite his hand. Uh, okay, so you bite his hand? Roll to hit? Rolls natural 20. Roll 1d4 damage? Rolls 4. Doubles to 8. Dragonborn Sorcerer only has 8 health. Okay, so you bite his hand off and he's now bleeding out. No one has any healing pots or magic. All level 1 characters. Dragonborn rolls 3 on death save. Next save, natural 1. Dragonborn is dead. Tiefling. I said I don't like to be touched. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, well... Don't play sorcerers or wizards or whatever, they die fast. Okay, interesting. <laughs> the villain explains why taxation is theft. DM keeps putting really shitty, overpowered, edgy DMPCs who share all of his personal views in his games. Someone finally brings it up. He stops with the DMPCs. We now have to deal with a really shitty, overpowered, edgy villain who shares all of his personal views. Well, fuck. Look on the bright side, this way you can kill them and in their last dying moments tell them they're completely wrong in a verbose, dramatic final speech counterpointing all their ideals. End it with, now right to hell on a rubber cock, you d cowboy, for emphasis. And you got yourself a good time. What the fuck, where is that from? In this case, my money is on the the villain wins type of story or the villain was right all along. Eventually, the villain is too strong for you to defeat, but here's the chosen one, completely overpowered DMPC that will help you in the final battle. In other words, the true that guy GM is like life itself. It always finds a way. If you die in real life, you die in the game. Had a player come in, red-eyed, and tell us he might not be his usual jolly self this week because his wife died. It made the whole session really awkward and we never talked about it not killing his wife in game 2 for symmetry. You had one job, Bainon. Who needs time stop when you don't understand surprise rules? Fighting big monster. Other monsters intervene. They all start attacking one after another. Wait, don't they have to roll into initiative? They get a surprise round. Anon just got time stopped by a group of monsters. <laughs> Player. B but that's not how surprise rounds work. DM. Well, surprise! He wanted to go. What the fuck is all this story shit? Where's the game, nerd? I thought we were going to roll dice or something. Had a guy like this in one of my games. PDMing for an RP heavy group. One of the players invites his cousin. Cousin is around 16 years old and looks like Joe Manganiello from Spider-Man. I asked the cousin if he's ever played D&D. He said, no, but I've seen compilation videos of Critical Role. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh boy, that's gonna be bad. Decide to f*** it good enough. Hook him up with a level 3 fighter and a set of dice and informed him of the current group scenario. I start the session by introducing his character into the story. 
I wasn't two minutes into introducing his character when he interrupts. Cousin. Hey, when are we gonna kill something? I tell him we will get to it eventually. However, we had to explain why and how his character joined the group, as to not disrupt the plot. He apologized, and we continued on. About 15 minutes later, as the party was preparing to travel, he piped up again. Cousin. Why haven't we seen any monsters yet? I tell him that we haven't even left the inn yet. He gets pissy, but nothing comes of it. Before the party left, the party members asked to get some supplies before leaving. As I was about to grab the list of items at the general store, the cousin started bitching. Cousin. I'm not waiting for you fuckers, f leaving without you. Everyone in the party told him it was a bad idea to venture out alone. His retort was, I'm a fighter, I'm built to kill. I looked at him and asked, are you sure you want to leave your party behind? He responded with a righteous yes. Okay. I told him that despite his better judgment, he decided to abandon his party and ventured out into the woods alone. I asked him to roll for encounter. He rolled a one. Me. As you make your way down the trail, you notice a white rabbit surrounded by bones. What do? I kill it. As you approach the rabbit, it lunges at your throat. Roll a deck save. He rolls a free. Well, the rabbit of Carbonog gnaws your head off. Moral of the story. Never venture alone. Decide fuck it, good enough. Every time this sentence is uttered, it's a downward spiral from there. <laughs> yeah. Just write a book. I am literally cursed when it comes to DMs. First DM is disinterested and can barely hold our attentions, let alone their own. Half the sessions, they just decided to watch a movie instead. Second DM is way too intense about it and forces us to do two day long sessions up in his little weed shack away from society. Only uses 3.5 and stole books from other players. Third DM is a literal who cannot keep himself composed, always gets flustered and can't control the group. Fourth DM is a dickhead and is always trying to kill and party wipe us 24-7. Fifth DM intentionally makes things way too difficult to the point of absurdity and mocks us when we constantly fail. None of these campaigns have ever ended on a good note, if at all. Am I doomed to have shit DMs, or should I just give up on ever properly playing and DM myself? DM for yourself. People will laugh at you, but given how most of the game is RNG anyway, it's less bizarre than it sounds. The Great Escape. It's finally gonna happen, boys. I get to play instead of DM for the first time in years. Wish me luck, please. Could it be? Have my dreams finally come true? Best of luck, Anon. Hope everything goes well and you have a lovely time. Don't backseat DM. Congrats, Anon. Have an elf. Good job, Anon. You go. Alright, we're gonna take a moment to say a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, which is everyone supporting this channel on Patreon. It's no actual sponsor. It, it Well, it is an actual sponsor, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, everyone that's that's been supporting the channel in the past months, um, I really appreciate it. So, I wanna take a moment and say a big, big thank you to you for that. And yeah, with that being said, enjoy the rest of the video. My sleek DM friend, be me. Semi forever DM looking to join a game. Been at me, DM, a close friend of mine, and five other players. Friend asks me if I want to join his game. I say yes. Friend says that they are three fourths of the way through a story arc and it's not thematic to add a character yet, so I sit and listen. Notice a weird naming convention going around for NPCs King Padma of No, Annalyn, Ground Runner of Tuin, etc. Around when the name Oni Kwan Nobi or Oni K Nobi, I shoot him a PM asking a question. He replied yes. I am now super stoked to take part in this story. This slick motherfucker is playing the entire Star Wars story in a medieval setting and has already finished the Phantom Menace without anyone noticing. That being said, he says if I can figure out a way to add clones into the story without breaking medieval immersions, he'll let me play that universe's Captain Rex. Any ideas that could work? Warforged. An ungodly number of Warforged. Replace the droids with undead, because thematically it would make more sense for the clones to be harder to kill versus a mass-produced army of the dead that mostly just goes for overwhelming numbers as the strategy. Is there a hole I can peek through? Well... Be me, DM. Be my players, playing Descent into Avernus. 
Party is playing a side quest I found on DM's guild, looking for a holy avenger sword in a tavern in Elturel, while it's in Avernus, because OP D&D is the best D&D. Cleric, for shits and giggles, decides to visit the privy, because it's the first toilet we've found in this f***ing campaign. Party finds a demon in a kitchen, eating food. Demon notices them, and attacks. Roll for initiative that JPEG. Demon casts Entangle, trapping 4 out of 5 party members, including the cleric on the toilet, with demonic vines. Cleric fails his strength check to get off the ship. <gasps> cleric. Can I cast Toll the Dead? Me. No, because it requires line of sight. Is there a hole into the kitchen that I can look through to cast it? Um, Sure. Devious thought that OGG. It's a glory hole. Big laughs all around. Cleric almost falls out of his chair laughing. Cleric does a lot of damage. Demon loses concentration. Evil vines disappear and he can leave the shit. That's what matters. If he can leave the shitter or not. <laughs> Cleric fails his strength check to get off the shitter. This is ridiculously funny to me. Just the idea of Cleric desperately straining to pinch it off so he can hurry out and join the battle. Murder hobo bad make DM angry. You see an empty field with a farmer fast asleep under a tree. I quietly approach the farmer and I stab him. Come on, you can't just stab everyone you meet. Okay, fine. I'll plant an item on him. Sure. What item and where? My dagger. In his kidney. Listen here, you. <laughs> oh, that was cute and nice. I hope it's not real. Alright, that's it for this video, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, please leave a like if you did and subscribe for more. Also thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon, really appreciate it. Check the link below or on the screen if you wanna become a Patreon supporter. Also links below if you wanna join the Discord, subreddit and other social media. And yeah, that's it, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!